We are blessed as long as we keep our agreement. We have to understand that an agreement with Yahweh carries two parts, and I want to make that clear here. Yahweh is the covenant God. He's our covenant God, and we contracted a bond to conform to the nature of Yahweh. And his nature is within us. We contracted a bond with Yahweh to reflect his image, to emulate his nature, to expound upon Yahweh's nature. We made a contract with Yahweh to sing praises to his name and to his nature. And we have to understand that the nature of Yahweh belongs to us. His very nature is our nature. And what makes that so precious is Yahweh is different from all the other gods of men on earth. Yahweh is flesh and blood. Yahweh walked and talked with Adam in the person as flesh and blood. He had a voice box. He talked. Yahweh walked and talked with Enoch. Yahweh walked and talked with Abraham and was a friend with Abraham. Yahweh had dinner and ate with the children of Israel and provided a theophany. Personal presence appeared personally to Moses. And in all of these instances, Yahweh appeared in bodily form. In fact, there were three men that appeared to Abraham, and he recognized Yahweh instantly and called him by name as soon as he saw him and ran to serve Yahweh. So Yahweh has always appeared in the form of a man. And since he formed, came in the form of a man, then Israel has always been able to know him, to recognize him on sight. What makes us different as Israel is we recognize Yahweh when he makes his appearance among us. And at this day and time, there's 144,000 of you who will recognize me on sight or recognize me through my words or recognize me through pictures or whatever medium that Yahweh chooses, you will recognize me, recognize my presence, recognize my aura, recognize my spirit, and know that I am in the flesh as the Son. This is what makes you Israel, is when you know who I am. Now, that means you have to understand the fact that I am incarnate. I picked up this body about 55 years ago, and I raised myself into the consciousness of myself. And I am come in the very nature of Yahweh. When you learn my nature, you will learn your nature. I am perfect. I come with a perfect, holy, and righteous nature. That is your inheritance. You have a right to your nature. That's your basic rights. And without those basic rights, then you become imperfect. Matthew 5.48 teaches you to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And you must study perfect. I pray to Yahweh that you stay up most of the night tonight studying perfection. Study it tomorrow. Study it the rest of your life. Look it up in the synonym finder. Perfection. That is your nature. That's your right. You didn't learn it in school. Therefore, an imperfect people are in charge of the school system. That means Lucifer, Satan, the devil is in charge of the schools. You didn't learn your nature, the nature of God. You didn't learn the nature of Yahweh in church. You didn't learn it in uh, schools. You didn't learn it from your economic teachers, and you didn't learn it from your political teachers, and you don't learn it, learn it from society. Therefore, you are open to tricks, deception, and to breaking the laws of man, which can cause you to end up in prison, to fall into the snare of the wicked, and uh, you are just prone for a trick, unhappiness, sadness, pain, and sorrow all of your life as long as you don't know your nature. So I am come on the earth to reveal to you your true nature. This is your basic right, and it's like the tree of life. Uh, your nature is Yahweh's nature. Accept it. You can't accept it until you study it and learn what his nature is. His nature, one of the first synonyms is his character. Therefore, Yahweh has a character. 
His character is your character. Praise Yahweh's holy name. Again, Shalom Aleichem. Also, um, I'd like to share with you some of Revelations chapter 12, which is the mystery woman in heaven. Uh, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and we know that this woman was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and up on her head a crown of twelve stars, and that symbolizes the son of Yahweh. I am that great wonder in heaven, the heaven of everybody's mind. I am that woman that is clothed with the sun and the moon under my feet. And upon my head, that crown of 12 stars represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And it is a fact that I am with child. And I'm getting bigger as the days go by. The crown upon my head, those 12 stars, are the 12 tribes of Israel. And of course, we, the so-called black people of America, are the tribes of Judah, one of those 12. And I have begun to cry out because I'm travailing in birth and I'm paying to be delivered. And of course, you can understand my travailing in birth and you can understand my pain to be delivered. My being here is not a joy and I wouldn't want anyone to think because I'm happy and joyful in spirit that being separated from you is a joy. However, there is a job to be done, and this job can only properly be done when you understand how important it is to have me with you. Our separation is causing you to grow up, to be strong, and to show the love to the world that you are mine. You're fulfilling a scripture which says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, as you show love one to another and this is exactly what you are doing right now and in verse 3 of Revelation 12 it says there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon their heads and of course this we know is my opponent my adversaries with an S there are many nations who have joined on uh, to this great red jacket, as you have an example of nations joining uh, on to Bush to fight in the Middle East. Uh, that's just an example of how nations join on and become uh, crowns and horns to those who are in authority uh, to rule uh, spiritually and, wicked and wickedly in high places. Um, and then we see that this great red dragon his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The stars of heaven are the children of Yahweh, the good people of the earth, regardless of their color. I have taught for years, and you who are new must understand that Satan, the devil, uses the skin color game. And the skin color game is used to divide people who are good from each other. It's not about skin color. And as I have taught from the beginning, Lucifer was blacker than a coal. And Lucifer himself is the devil. And his son Cain was black until he had a mark put on him. So the reality is we remain separated as the family of Yahweh so long as we believe in the skin color game. And you have to give it up. You have to give up that type of mindset. Because as long as you hold that mindset, then your enemy can play the game of keeping us divided one from another. It's all about morality versus immorality. So when we get down to um, verse 4, we find that uh, the tail of the dragon drew the stars, the good people, the righteous people, the holy people, down uh, to the earth with them. Down to the earth is uh, today means that their minds have been made carnal. Uh, the carnal mind today deals with lust, the lust of this world, the greed of this world, materialistic greed, uh, carnal lust of, of men uh, being drawn to other men or women drawn to other women or the lust of men to women, 
uh, just all kinds of lust, where they worship lust as opposed to worshiping the Creator. Uh, it's most important that we worship the Creator and not lust. We must understand that if we seek the kingdom of heaven first, then all the things of this world will be added unto us. This is all in the Bible. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Write that down, and you'll be able to study that uh, later. We find in verse 4 that the dragon is standing before the woman, which is ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. I am resurrecting you, resurrecting our people. And you are this child that is to be born. You that are here now, you constitute the head. You're the first part of the head. The million is the body. And what good is a head without arms, without legs, without the trunk of a body? Uh, you must have your body in order to be able to uh, be served as the head. The head must have that in order to circumlocute the earth, in order to move around, in order to be happy and have joy. Um, in the meantime, that's your job, is to move out. Uh, verse 5, don't worry about will I be successful or not, because I'm going to bring forth a man-child. That is a fact. It's written in verse 5, I will bring forth the man-child. Now, why is your enemy, my adversary, so upset? It's because that the child, the man-child that I'm bringing forth is going to rule all nations with a rod of iron. A rod of iron means that there will be no deviation in the law. A rod of iron is, is very, very hard. It's inflexible. It takes great heat to even cause iron to either melt or to bend or to be shaped into something else. So only the sun could do that. But in the meantime, this child that I'm having is going to rule the earth with a rod of iron, meaning they're never going to break the law again. And that's what you represent now. That's one of the reasons why I'm absent from you this point in the feast and this point in your life is to bring you clearly into the understanding that you have to grow up to keep the law, whether you see my body physically or not. Uh, those that are unable to come to the feast in whatever cities they're in, they should keep Feast of Passover. They should keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread uh, in whatever city they're in. This is what we have to come into the knowledge of. This is the law of Yahweh. You must keep it regardless. Uh, also, this child is going to be caught up unto Yahweh and to Yahweh's throne. And in verse 6, the woman is going to flee into the wilderness where there's a place already prepared of Yahweh so that you can be nourished and fed and helped. Uh, in verse 11, you see that all of you, all of my children, my son, all of you will overcome the dragon by the blood of the lamb. I'm the lamb. What does it mean by my blood? Look in your synonym finder. Look in your dictionary. Look in your encyclopedia. Blood means more than that which flows through the body is symbolic. The blood deals with my life, the life that I live, the life that I, have, I could have lived and have given up to bless you, to save you, to deliver you. The life that I could have lived outside of, it was my choice. I could have taken different paths, but it is written, and I have accepted what is written, so I'm here to deliver you and to show the world that though my body is in one location, I am truly omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. You are going to overcome the dragon by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. And you do not love your lives unto the death. That's what you're proving. You're proving to the world that you are not bound by the fear of death. This is what holds a man in slavery is when he is afraid of death. But all Hebrew Israelites, as I have said to you, I'll repeat, you have the power to be incarnate. Please turn to side two. Now, remember in verse 13, when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. So I'm in my state of persecution. But you see that I'm going to fly out of here with, and be given two wings of a great eagle. Well, that's your job, to go to work, and I'll show you how it's done. Now, what is the process for my son to be born? It's Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. 
and I am prophesying uh, all that Yahweh wants me to do, uh, it is also very clear that uh, as the word is passed of my persecution and crucifixion and suffering, the people are beginning to respond. You find that people all over America, they do in fact know my name. It is a fact that people are signing for Yahweh Ben Yahweh's release. My release, they understand, is also their release. You can tell now that Yahweh has cleared the slate. There are no national leaders now before the so-called black men of America. As I told you for 10 years, Yahweh would remove all false leaders. Yahweh would remove anyone who would contend with him or with me. That Yahweh would absolutely set them all down. No question about that. And now, you see, I have told you for 10 years, I will not share my glory with another. So what Yahweh has done is has set down all national leaders. So now, there's only one man left on the national scene that everybody knows, and that's Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So now is the time to run hard, run fast. You can see from the word of prophecy in Revelation that time is short. You can see that the dragon, Satan, the devil, can see that his time is short. And he's coming down with great wrath because he understands that. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14, it gives you the perfect birthing process that we would go through to be born, that you would go through to be born from me. I'm a servant to Yahweh, I'm a servant to you, and I'm a servant to those yet unborn. So as we look at Ezekiel chapter 37, we can see that the birthing process is taking place. We know that I would breathe upon these dry bones and cause the dry bones to come together bone by bone, and I am also causing flesh to come upon those bones and sinews upon those bones to make the bones move from one point to another. I'm getting that job done. Also. As I begin to prophesy, and you'll find that Yahweh is doing a mighty work in this land uh, in bringing his name to the front and to the consciousness of all people. So what we're about to recognize is this will be an exceeding great army. In fact, no one, no one from among us has ever raised even 144,000 to stand as one in Yahweh. That's never been done in the last 6,000 years. You have to let the world know that the enemy of Yahweh, is holding your Savior. You have to let the world know that the U.S. government is holding your Reformer, your Redeemer, your God, your Messiah, the righteous King of Israel. You have to let them know. You have to cry out so the whole world will understand. Just like the black man of America can cause the whole world to give high five and to do the twist and to copy rap and to copy every dance that you can come up in your mentally dead state. If you can cause the whole world to imitate you in your mentally and spiritually dead state, what do you think you can cause them to do when you become consciously awake and let them know that you are consciously awake, that your God is here, your Savior is here, your Redeemer is here, your King is here. I want the world to know He is here. Let Him free. Turn Him loose. And the whole world will have to respond. It's time for the whole world to say, the dry bones live. The dry bones have come together. It, only God can bring this about. And that's who's in your midst today. I'm bringing that about. Every one of you was a dry bone. How many of you can bear witness that before I came into your life, you were blind? And I've opened your blinded eyes. You were deaf. I've opened your deaf ears. You were dumb, and I have caused your dumb tongue to speak the knowledge of your God, your history, your culture, your language, your name, your land, and your civilization. I am causing this because I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the light. I'm the one that's causing this to happen. And there is not an accident about this. It's on purpose. I'm doing it consciously. And I want to say to you, I'm so grateful to Yahweh that you can bear witness that you were once crippled and I've caused you to walk. You can bear witness that you were once dead, and now you are alive, because I'm the life, and I'm the one that gives light to every man that enters into this earth. I'm, 
I have established the kingdom of heaven. It's microcosmic, but it's established. I'm establishing the kingdom of Yahweh. It's microcosmic, but it's established. I have set up government de jour. Every single kingdom on this planet Earth is government de facto. And I'm raising you to consume every kingdom on the planet Earth with government de jour. And I want to congratulate you. You have not built a golden calf. In the day of Moses, he was only gone 40 days. such a blessing before the whole planet earth that you have not built a golden calf in 40 days. It is such a blessing to see that. This proves that you're going to live forever. This proves that you have been reborn. I can declare that you are alive forevermore, that my spirit actually lives within you. I've taken the heart, a stony heart from you and given you a heart of flesh. Yeah, lady, you see, now I'm living in a peaceful and a tranquil mind. This you concludes see, part one of Passover, do. Feast of Unleavened see, Bread. Oh, 